Well, it's the first full week of fall, and that means fall sports are in full swing, but experts are warning young athletes to take extra care to protect themselves. Joining us to talk about this is Regents Executive Medical Director, Dr. Daniel Meltzer. Doctor, thanks so much for being here this morning. My pleasure. Okay, so uh, first question, let me preface with this. I haven't played, uh, you know, serious organized sports in about 20 years now, but in just the last month, I've had an MRI on my shoulder, one on my, one of my knees, and an x-ray on my neck, and all of these are just from past injuries that, uh, that are still seeming to pile up and never go away. So with that being said, how big of an issue are sports-related injuries, especially for youth? Clearly, they're clearly they're a big issue. Thanks for contributing to the, uh, the the domestic product of the healthcare system, there, Matt. They're they're, they're pretty common. They're about twenty percent of all injury related visits that we see in the emergency department are from sports injuries. And and despite your trials and tribulations, they're actually particularly common amongst adolescents and young adults. About seventy percent of these injuries are in kind of the ten to twenty year old range, and not surprisingly, more common in males. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Now, what kind of activities uh, would you say are more likely to have those injuries and land you uh, in the hospital? Yeah, I mean, certainly contact sports. So we think this time of year, certainly we think about football. As you move closer to winter, we think about basketball. And then other sports that actually individual sports where people can get up a high rate of speed. So think cycling or riding a skateboard. These are kind of the, some of the common injuries that we see from those types of sports. Okay, so now when we think about common uh, types of sports-related injuries, uh, I know that it's so much of the focus over the past, let's say, five years has been concussions, head-related things. But, of course, there's so many other kinds. When you're thinking of uh, football, you think about knees. That's what I think about and whatnot. But what would you say are some of the common types of sports-related injuries? Yeah, I mean, you nailed it. So um, just like you were you know, sharing in the beginning, major joints from upper or lower extremities, so shoulders, knees, ankles, um, however, to, to your point, amongst children and adolescents, we know that sports and recreational activities contribute to about 20% of all traumatic brain injuries. So sustaining a head injury from sports can be anything from, you know, a mild bump on the head or a cut to something more serious like a traumatic brain injury. Okay, now times have obviously changed since I was doing sports. Um, you shouldn't, or you're told, hopefully not, you're told not to just play through the pain anymore. Don't just rub some dirt on it. You know, if, if you have an injury, you should really be aware, especially head injury. So with that being said, there's still gonna be some kids who wanna maybe tough it out, play through injury no matter what they're going through. So with that being said, what signs should parents and coaches look for when it comes to these injuries? Yeah, we've learned a lot more really over the past decade about the severity of head injuries, even in young adults, maybe when there's not signs in the beginning, but certainly concerning signs to your point are pain, you know, worsening pain, particularly a headache, um, any head injury that results in loss of consciousness, so blacking out or you may be associated with vomiting and, you know, more severe signs can be changes in your neurologic status, so if you're having difficulty walking, changes in your memory strength, movement, um, and you know things like seizures or even finding difficulty words, challenges with your thought processing. Okay, now this question might depend on the sport, but how would you say we can prevent injuries? Yeah, certainly. So, you know, think about football this time of year, for example, so gearing up, so making sure that we're wearing the right protective equipment for joints, that may be things like shin guards, wrist and knee protectors for more aggressive contact sports, we always wanna make sure we're wearing helmets, and that includes things like cycling and skateboarding that I mentioned. Making sure that we're in shape. So for kids in particular, we always recommend a sports physical with their child's healthcare provider to make sure that they're physically fit, heart, lungs, joints, et cetera. Um, make sure you have some of the right training. So we don't want people just to kind of go out and weekend warrior it, including kids. So ease into it, get the right training. And it's important also to do age appropriate sports, developmental appropriate sports for kids, and then practicing, understanding the rules, taking time, and then certainly when it's hot, you know, earlier in the year, as we've seen, making sure that we're staying hydrated, making sure we have the right amount of food so that our body has the resilience it needs to sustain these sports. Perfect, okay, all great tips, and we are out of time. So joining us this morning has been Regents Executive Medical Director, Dr. Daniel Meltzer. Thanks so much for being here, doctor. Thank you.